In this video, I'm doing a position analysis from a last rule position. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. My book, Backgammon and Back Game Strategies, is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. If you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email address is in the description. So this is a position analysis from a position from a match between Oliver Squire and Sebastian Wilkinson. These are two of the best players in the world, and they're both out of the UK. This is a match from the London Open 2023 in the second round of the Masters event. It's a 13-point match. Oliver is playing the black checkers at the bottom. Sebastian, the white checkers at the top. Uh, it's a 13-point match. Oliver has zero points. Sebastian has four. So Sebastian is leading 4-0. So Sebastian needs nine points to win the match. So Sebastian is nine away. Oliver needs 13 points. So Oliver is 13 away. So it's 13 away, nine away. Oliver owns a four cube. This is the position. Oliver is considering redoubling to eight. So take a look at the position. Think about what you would do and pause the video for a moment if you like. And we'll take a look at the analysis in a moment. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Before we continue, you need to understand that there's going to be a lot of math involved in this and calculations, so be prepared for that. Now, here, black is an underdog to win because black has one rule remaining. Uh, so you would think that it's, it's clearly not a double. Why would anyone redouble if they're an underdog? However, in a match, when the score is lopsided, like it is here at 13 away, 9 away, and in particular with higher cube levels, things become more complicated. So let's take a look. For a last roll doubling decision in a match, you want to know your odds. The way you do that is you calculate the risk, you calculate the gain, and you compare the risk divided by the sum of the risk and gain to your winning percentage. So we're going to look at all of this in a moment. Uh, you calculate the risk and gain from, a mat, from the match equity table, and I will show you that in a moment. And you can calculate the winning percentage by counting the number of winning rolls. And we'll look at that as well. So here, this... <clears throat> excuse me, this is the match equity table. You can see that from XG. This is the player's number of points from winning. So this is the player's away score, and this is the opponent's away score. So the score is zero to four out of 13. And again, uh, Oliver has zero, and he needs 13 points. So he's at 13 away. Sebastian has four, and he needs nine to get to 13. So Sebastian is at nine away. The away score is always more important than the absolute score. And these tables always use the away score. So at 13 away, nine away, this is Oliver 13 away and then nine away for Sebastian. Before the start of the game, Oliver has an approximately 32% chance to win the match from here. I just round up to the nearest uh, integer or whole number. Now, Let's look at what happens, okay? If Oliver does not double and win, it becomes 4-4. Four, four. So nine away, nine away. So of course, at an even score, the match winning chances will be 50%. If he does double and win, he'll have eight points and be at five away, which is here. And Sebastian will still be at nine away. So Oliver will have a 73% chance of winning the match. So the gain he gets here is the difference of this 73 minus 50, that's 23% gain. And we'll look at that again in a moment. Let's say Oliver loses. If he does not double, 
He'll still be at 13 away, but now Sebastian will be at eight points, which is five away. So 13 away, five away is 14% match winning chances. If Oliver doubles to eight and loses, Sebastian will get eight points to be at 12. So that's going to be the Crawford game. And Oliver will still be at zero. So 13 away, one away Crawford for only 2% match winning chances. So the risk is the difference of these two numbers, which is 14 minus two, and that's 12. So let's look at that again. So if he does not double, if he wins, he gets the nine away, nine away for 50% chance of match winning chance. But if he loses, He's at 13 away, five away for 14% match winning chances. If he does double and wins, he's at five away, nine away for 73% match winning chances. And if he doubles and loses, he's at 13 away, one away Crawford for 2% match winning chances. So the risk is the difference uh, when you lose between doubling and not doubling. So that's 14 minus two and that's 12. The gain is the difference uh, from when you win between doubling and not doubling. So that's 73 minus 50, and that's 23. So the risk divided by the sum of the risk and gain is 12. That's the numerator, and the denominator will be the sum of these two, 12 plus 23, which is 12 over 35, and that's 34%. So I know this is a lot of math, but this is uh, what you need to understand to be able to make these calculations and get the correct cube action in these positions. Now, look at the number of winning rolls. So he has one checker on the five, one checker on the three. So the rolls that win are five, three, five, four, six, three, six, four, six, five. Those are the non-doubles. So that's five of them. So that makes 10 rolls because the non-doubles occur twice. And then the doubles that work are double three, four, five, and six for four more numbers for a total of 14. 14 divided by 36 is 39% winning chances. So the risk divided by the risk plus gain was 35% and your winning percentage is 39%. Since 39 is greater than 35, sorry, this, is, this should say 35, it's a typo. Um, the correct action is a double. So that's what you see here on the analysis. And I'm gonna zoom in here. Here it says no redouble, the equity is minus 0.222. And after a redouble take, the equity is minus 0.142. So the equity is still negative. However, it's still a correct double because of the lopsided match score. So this is a very unique, type of position where you can double with a negative equity. You're doubling as an underdog, and it's only because of the match score. If you were playing a money game here, it would be a clear no redouble and beaver. You would be losing 667 millipoints by redoubling. So that's a huge difference. Now, let's look at a different score. So now in this case, Oliver's still at zero, but uh, I decreased Sebastian's score to three. So now Sebastian is 10 away. So let's do the same sort of calculation. Uh, if he uh, does not double and wins, he gets the nine away, 10 away for a 55% match winning chances. But if he loses, he's at 13 away, six away. Uh, for 18% match winning chances. And if he does double and win, he gets the five away, 10 away for 77% match winning chances. And if he doubles and loses, he's at 13 away, two away for 4% match winning chances. So again, the calculations are as follows. The risk is 18 minus four, which is 14. The gain is 77 minus 55, which is 22. So the risk divided by the risk plus gain is 14 divided by the sum of 14 and 32, which is 14 divided by 36, which is 39%. The number of rolls that win are the same. It's still 39%. So the risk divided by risk plus gain is 39%. The winning percentage is 39%. Since these two are equal, then the correct action is a borderline double, no double. And in the analysis, you see that here. 
Uh, it turns out to be a borderline no redouble. It's technically a, a no redouble rather than uh, even between no redouble and redouble because that 39% was an estimate. Um, it's actually 38.89%. Um, so it's slightly less. So that makes it a correct no redouble. In any of the cases, it's always a take because uh, white is a huge favorite. So that explains how to do the calculations for the match winning chances, how to calculate the odds, how to calculate the risk, the gain, and the odds are the risk divided by the risk plus gain, and then how to calculate your winning percentages on a last roll is pretty straightforward, and you need to compare all those uh, to see what the correct cube action is. Uh, Oliver thought about this for about three minutes and came to the correct answer. I'll put a link in the description to the video so you can actually see that. Um, so I know that was a lot of math, but that's what you need for these kinds of positions. And hopefully you can learn something from that. These are very complicated, very complicated. Matches uh, can be much more complicated than simple money games, especially when they're longer matches and higher cube levels because the calculations become a little bit more complex. So that was the video for the last role position analysis. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. Again, my book, Backgammon Backgame Strategies, is available. There's a link in the description to where you can buy it. If you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email address is in the description. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. And until then, keep rolling your dice.